Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to part 9 of the TOS Enterprise build. Uh, today we're going to actually start working on the flashboard for the Bassards. We're going to start putting that together, because Gary sends them to you unassembled. But they're really easy to put together, his instructions are great. Um, the board even has stuff marked where things go anyway, so let's take a look. Well, hello everyone. Um, I'm going to build the uh, board that makes the facades uh, rotate. This is by Gary Hughes. Um, one of the reasons uh, his kits are a little less expensive is because you have to assemble the boards, but they're really easy. They're very simple boards, um, which is nice. Um, but yeah, this has a momentary switch, which we're actually going to extend. I'm not sure if I'm going to want to put it in the base or I can just put it where I can access it by pulling the deflector dish because I'm not going to glue that in. I'm always going to have that able to come off. My refit fits so nice and snug. I did the same thing. That way I don't have to, you know, if I were to glue it, I would, you know, if it was loose, I would use like a window cement, something that you can, a little water around the edges and it'll pop right off. Um, so I might even put it in there, so if I want to change it, which I doubt I will. I just want that nice rotation. So, but it gives you the option too, if you want to make it do faster, or I don't know what all the programs are, if it's similar to the, uh, I'm sure this is similar to the, um, NX1, where, like, you know, you can make it do weird things and stuff like that, so, it might be cool, so. But, yeah, this is a real simple board. Here's all the parts. You get two capacitors, two resistors. I think they're one 10K. And you got, you know, your transistors and stuff like that. Those are here. Here are the pegs for that send power to the wire. This one, I think, is going to be a negative, this single one. And then I have two doubles and a quad. And then this angle one will be for the power. For the power coming in. And then we got resistors. that got to go on for the... Uh, bulbs which will actually attach to these and then we can attach the wire to that and I might actually attach these first those to these first so much easier solder and I think we'll see but let's let's get admired hot it's on I turned it down because I started doing other stuff Um, yeah, everything's getting ready to put together, but I can't until we get this done. And on the open bay, got the photo etch piece on, painted that white, and then it then put the photo etch piece on, and then did a window maker. And that did a little silver tape there with a little notch so that light can shine in there, and then painted the wall silver too. And I got a little bit where I don't want paint to be for the light. That's easy enough, you just scrape it away. Still going very good. Yep. Real good. And then I went and painted in here uh, the same color on the inside of the doors as the inside of the hanger bay. That way that's consistent. And then outside will be the hull color, which will be a gray with a little green in it. So, yeah, so that's looking good. <clears throat> light box blocked those edges. Also, light blocked under here before I painted the gray. The silver tape will help a lot of it, but still, this outer piece could start glowing. And how are you? Oh no, that's too good. All right, um, yeah, but the hull's ready to go together. The engineering hull. I got the uh, hangar bay completely finished. And, uh, 
the hanger bay is glued in now. And did a little wire cleanup because it was a spaghetti mess, especially with all these little SMDs. But yeah, she's glued in there now, and that way I can start tacking wires out of the way. And this I can leave here. Good thing I blocked all these windows are blocked out, because you can just have a wire mess back here. But yeah, that's what it's looking like, and then the hot glued all the other wires together. But since there are so many wires here in this big ward of resistors for all the SMDs, I just twist them all together and then solder it on a... Uh, just a red wire to go up to this instead of having this huge thing. It wouldn't allow me to have any room for this board. So I want to put that board, I don't know if I'm going to go this way or that way. Probably go this way. I don't know. That's one thing that's not crucial at this moment, but I'll probably do it like that. I have to look to see which way all the prongs are on, mostly on the upside. There's the power, so they're going to be mostly there. So maybe I should do it like this. And a short jumper there. And that's the side that has the tall stuff too. Like that capacitor and that transistor are tall. Yeah, and then that way I can just have a quick little whoop for the power. And all those can come in the hippies, and they're all on the side. But yeah, with this big thing here, it would have it was stuck halfway out here when I stuck it in there for a test. So I'm like, why don't I just hot glue all that? I won't have a mess. And uh, attach one wire to it. And same thing with the negatives. So that's what that is. And these black and reds are basically the same thing, but for the strip lighting. I just already tied them together, but then they go in there and get power that way. These purple wires are for... I was going to switch the white light up on the top of the shuttle bay. And I still might do it. It adds a little more light. It's not giving me the light I was hoping. It would get really bright, but it's enough. It's mainly because it has to be so close. The further back, the more it spreads its light and it seems to get brighter. But with up close, it kind of limits it. But The nice thing is it gives a little more glow from above and definitely makes it look nice in there. So I still might do them, but that's why I did them on a purple switch, both of them. So I could tie them together to a switch leg. So that's what the purple ones are. That's basically it. I mean, just a lot of teetering, getting lights from where I can get a good glow on the windows. On these windows. What was the thing? Especially with this limited room. You know, I do have an SMD on the side here for blasting at it, but then I have these here where it sends more wa a wash back there as well. Made it a little more even. This, this alone only made it hot. And I could have probably put two... But dealing with those small little SMDs and all these little wires where an LED strip is a little easier. So I got one in there. And then this long one here um, is for the back window. So that's where we're at. But we can't put anything together. It's a spaghetti mess. It'll get better. I do have to squeeze a bit to get that to fully close, unlike up here. Bottom's closing pretty good too, but still, we're probably going to have a little bit of a gap. Probably right in here. And here I can get pretty tight, and there I can get pretty tight. It's just right in there, which is the bulk of the shuttle bay probably still. But I can get these squeezed tight. There's a little bit of a gap here. I can get the end into about here tight. But from here to here, a little opening. And I still got to get that clear part in there. But all in all, it's fitting together pretty well. Even this goes in really nice. 
And anyway, let's get to the uh, building this board. I think, like I said, this this one here, the single one, we don't have to attach a wire because that's an or a resistor because that's a it's a negative. I mean, I guess we can just like that. Sometimes that twist and helps a hold it and helps it solder better too. Then you can actually bring the solder to the and we'll just cut that little extra ooh yeah, you're still hot. Ooh yeah, massively hot. You need to cool down by now. All right, and then just keep doing that. That's extra legs out or we can clip them. Try to get as close as possible. There we go. This one will end up, I think, being right here. Hopefully, heating those up could make it move. Like each peg, get all four of those to line up. ones. So we got all the outputs with resistors on them. 
Like I said, those are going to be probably the last one because they're all tall. I have to get the lower stuff done first. So then you can, when you're flipping over, you have you can push down to make sure. So let's get this chipboard in. Chipboard always has a, a most of them have that round little indent. It's like a little half circle on one end, and the other one will, end will be flat. That's got to go a certain way because then the chip has the same thing. It'll have a little half circle notch in it. And that shows you which way to put it in the seat it in the, the board socket. And then this board actually shows you which way to go. These are always fun to try to get there. Right, right in. That's nice. But yeah, make sure that half circle notch is in the it's this way and they show a half circle notch in the little diagram that's on the board. The board shows you what's going in what spot. And then what I do sometimes is I flip over, put pressure evenly and push a couple over. Just the hair. And I'll keep her seated tight. There we go. Alright, nothing to it but to do it. You want your board, your iron fairly hot with this. This one's still not hot enough, I think, for this. You want to be able to see a little bit of it come out this side. It won't t it won't wick a lot of it, but it'll wick enough. Then you know you got a good complete solder joint. And you want to see shiny solder points when it gets foggy. That means you got a cold solder joint. So those sides look pretty good. And I saw the side, so I know it's soaked through. It's harder to see on these chipboards. So we can get this other side. There we go. All right, what other low stuff the resistors would be? One 10k there and a 10k there. And like I said, they do. It does show you. It'll have like a little cylinder and it says 10k. Here it actually tells you switch and gives you a positive and negative leg. So it does show you. Here it actually tells you that, that peg is negative. So like I said the switch we're just gonna have to run a long wire to. Like I said, I, the craziest thing is I don't know where I want to put it. If I want to put it in the in the base. It's gotta be a little momentary switch. It may give you this square thing. I put it in the base. I'm gonna have a switch for the the blue grills on the nacelles. I'm gonna have a switch for that yellow light at the ball end of the nacelles, and maybe a switch for that light in the shuttle bay. Well, we'll come to that bridge, but we know we're not putting it on. And then I can do wires long enough just to make it to the deflector dish. And if I decide to. go another way it doesn't matter I, just, I don't think it matters which way the positive and negative is it does say switch positive I don't think it matters for this it's just a momentary switch so let's get these resistors going it doesn't matter which way resistor will resist uh, which way you put it all you need to do is just roughly just stick both legs in the hole. And you get it like that and just pull them, try to pull it down even. Which is hard when your handlers drive mine uh, Or you can push it down like that. Just 
pull each one of those legs just a little bit off the side, it'll keep it tucked down, and you can solder. And then we'll snip the excess off. Check to see if I see solder yet. I see solder that came through. And then it's on. <clears throat> Which goes right there. Sometimes it's nice to make a little U at first, too. It's easier. Like I said, it's well worth buying these kits for that reason, where you get a whole kit for a ship for quite cheaper than what most people have. Unless you want to get really special, and you know, Tenet Controls is a company I really like and trust. Their components are great, they're made here in the USA. I have a couple of their boards that I love. But for these basic things like this. And it makes you feel... I like it because it makes you feel like it's more part of like, you know, how they built the real models. You get to build the circuit boards. Alright, now these, what are they, 100? And frat capacitors, ceramic ones. They go in these little oval areas. They're non-polarity as well. Doesn't matter which way it goes in. Same thing with the resistors. You can just pull them or push them until they. That's pretty good. And then you just spread each leg a different way a little bit and have a holder steady until you solder. Now, well, should we go with the other capacitor? Which this capacitor is polarity sensitive. These usually these black ones that are in a barrel, they'll usually have a white stripe on one side next to a leg, and one leg's longer than the other. But it'll actually be marked. That long stripe is the actual negative. Yeah, it says here on here, your long pin is the positive, which is another way, just like on a, you know, a LED, where the longer cathode is the positive. But also here, that stripe has a slash, which is actually a negative slash. So that's how, and then the board will tell you, she goes...
There, so long leg goes to the bottom hole. This other negative is this side. So these, the, this capacitor is a, like I said, is polarity sensitive. There we go. Set nice and even. Come up through both. Yep. For some reason I was thinking the switch went there, but the switch goes there. That's why it's had a plus minus, and the switch does. Um, what was next? I think it's just the outputs and the input. Oh, no, we had a transistor. Yep. Now, I believe this would have a positive. Kind of thing happening. Plus, we got three pins. And one of them's got to bend kind of forward because the way the socket is in the box, it's not just three holes in a line. It's one and then one steps, center one steps up and then the other one steps back. But that's enough. Yeah, it's trying to line all the three of these up at the same time. I wonder how do you hold the board I it can poke through. Let's get some solder down. Oh, that came out really good. It sure looks like I knew what I was doing. Getting better at the soldering. I did a lot because I was an audio engineer, so I helped fix can uh, consoles. We did a whole automation upgrade to an old Harrison console. So I had to solder like, I don't know, something ridiculous amount of points. Because uh, in the audio world, you're running balance signals, so you got, you know, a plus and minus and a ground, a shield. So one connection usually deals with three, one signal wire line can deal with three wires for your high low and ground. And there we go. And now it is left to our outputs and inputs. And then we'll put our chip board in. Our chip. And there is the plus. Plus there. I do that even when I do the navigation lights on the saucers because you're looking at it from the top and you're like, okay, that's easy. But sometimes you flip it upside down to work on it and it's going to be the opposite from that view. So I just do stuff just to make sure it makes your life so much, makes life so much easier just to do something simple like that instead of all of a sudden you're like, uh oh. Now these you need to make sure they're pushing all the way up. At least I like them all the way pressed down, so sometimes you gotta find something. Yeah, that worked really good. 
I'm going to get three others if we can get them in. So like I said, I'm wondering if they shift it a little bit when you heat them up. Nothing's going to be more difficult than the four pin because we got to try to line four of them up. As we go for the four, I might have to use my lens here to see all these. Yeah, because this one's that way. Yeah, definitely gonna need that because it's hard to see. Shiny thing on a shiny thing. No, not too hard. There was one just off just a hair. There we go. Nice. Once you can see where you're lining up. Not too bad. Good. And then we'll shrink two of them all. But that's it. Oh no, we have our negative. A single negative hit. This is gonna be interesting because it's hard to hold. in there and all you do is put the chip in there. Sometimes these are fun to do as well. Like I said again on the on the chip itself it's gonna have that half moon or half circle notch which goes with the notch on there. And I find that they have these things spread out a lot. So you kinda gotta give them a slight Squeeze, just a slight. All these things in the way. Can't get my fingers in there. They're all lined up in your sockets. You are not. But the more even you set it in, the better. And don't you do that. Sometimes it's good just to do it right back. And again, evenly. I mean, the socket is like a, a two things that go like this. That are just kind of like spring loaded. So you have some leeway. I don't need to. It's hard to see each little socket.
Yep. Again, make, keep making sure you have it in the right direction. I think we got it here. There it goes. Boop. You just gotta give it a good push, those all in like that. Because they always come from the manufacturer, a little spread out. But yeah, that's it, pretty much. Very simple. Then all those different colored wires coming down from the pylons. It's going to be a different output leg. We we'll get soldered these resistors, the resistors for the actual LED bulbs. I think there are four. He has four seventy resistors. I think on this. Uh huh. Here's the template for my acrylic cutout because you can't use the factory piece, the kit part. It, I was trying to figure out how I could use the kit part. Mm, nope, there's no way. Which I thought then I was going to have to exclude all these little candle tips. And then not only those candle tips, then there's these, what, two, four, six, eight, ten smaller ones. And then I think there's two, four, Six, eight, ten, ten of those little candles, five per side. But then I was thinking, I'm gonna have plenty of room on these. We're just gonna have these outer circles, which I have an orange here. So I could add more lights to this besides the ones spinning and have them flash and give it those colors that you normally see the blues and greens and reds. So I figured I'd use one flash SMD and have it control another one, just a regular SMD, so they'll flash at the same time, unless I use five flashing LEDs, which I could, and then they would all just do what they wanted to, which is an option. That would be kind of cool too. Hmm. Yeah, because I would just need the one, two, three, well, I only need four of them. So eight all together. I wonder if I should. So it's only eight. Do I have eight? Any flashers? There's two, four, five. These will probably be better, a little smaller. Yep. One, two, three, four, five. That's this other one smaller. Mm, no, it's more like more like those. So there's one, two, three, four, five. So I have ten. Hmm. But I'm thinking it's not really gonna, you know, if I just use two flashers per side. One, like I was going to do blue, and I had the blues flash at the same time, and have one up here on the wheel, and one opposite of itself. Those could flash, and then the green and red, since you only can have four per side. They did a fifth, right? Yeah, because if there's ten of those things, they did a, five, a fifth one. But to keep them separated... I mean, I guess I could have done blue, green, red, blue, green, red, blue, green, and then blue again. Nah, four's enough. I have those four doing, so the green and the red could be on a flasher. One flasher, one normal. So those would, you know, I think that would be enough. Just to give it a little more something going on. I mean, these are already going to be doing a lot, and I've seen just the orange, and they look fine. But I figured I could put those in. And drill a hole through the uh, acrylic, you know, like that, and still add these candles. Because there's going to be room, I think. Or I have one loose. Because these are just going to be little tips of LED heads sticking through. Yeah, and if I put these however I don't know if there's a specific way they're supposed to sit 
and I can put those in there and have the flashers flash these. And then I just paint. I could probably clear coat, coat these whole thing, the whole outside. I was wondering if I just color the uh, LED. I wish I had colored flashers. That'd be great. I have like green, blue, and red flashers. That'd be awesome. But I do. But I can always color the bulb. And definitely color it apart. Which I think would be the best way. Doesn't matter. Like with these, I liked the color that underneath, so the top still has the clear for the navigations on top, and it makes them look shiny and it makes them look cool because the color looks like it's deep inside. But when you look from the side, you still see clear, and you kind of see a color haze, like an atmosphere. It looks really cool. So those I like coloring. A lot of plastic things I don't like coloring the outside of it, even with transparent paint. It just doesn't look right. So, but these won't matter. They're going to be hidden behind the bassard and, and the spiral, you know, and the grill thing. So they won't. The flashing is what's going to matter. And then I figure I just have these static, but still in there. And color them different colors. I think you're supposed to do the red, green, and blue. Who? Get my solder done. I think you're supposed to do them red, green, and blue randomly. Or that might be in the instructions of the of the kit. Yeah, so I'll do, you know, these in the red, green, and blue and just put them in the spots between. So I try to have these other flashers I'm going to add, you know, one segment apart. And then I'll put these little ones in those spots. And do them red, green, and blue. Randomly. Just because light in there shining, well, you'll be hoping, you know, maybe. It might add a little effect, I don't know. If not, not a big deal. But that's where I'm at. We are done with this. So, I figured I'd show you this. I know I, I believe I've done this on one of the uh, the NX1 build. But why not do it again? But yeah, thanks for uh, hanging out and watching. I hope that made, you know, soldering simple electronic boards less scary for you because really it's not. Especially when they have you have good instructions and like I said, the boards like these. You can find some of these online, you know, and get them really cheap even yourself if you want a flash board, so, you know. Or this is a actual effects board that does things, but even the flash boards I get from Gary, you know, they're simple to put together. You have the one that's variable, it gives you a spinning thing. So you can change the flashing rate, and or he has, you find simple ones that have, <coughs> depending on what components you use, you can swap out a resistor or a capacitor or something here and there, and you can change the timing. But, or you can order boards with certain specific timing that are simple flash not variable but you know they'll give you that so and that's it very simple we're ready now we can actually start getting this uh secondary hull put together it's wired up and then yeah it'll be putting the pylons in and getting getting them glued and then wiring in the wires to this and then closing her up with the neck on so till next episode thanks for watching